do you know very often our brain tricks us to be stuck with mobile or get addicted to mobile isn't it interesting but unfortunately it's a reality and we experience it all the time and this video is all about understanding creating awareness on how our brain tricks us and what do we do about it there's a saying in bhagavad gita lord krishna says uddhare atmanatmanam atmanam avasadhayet atmaiva hyatmana bandhu atmaiva ripuratmana you are responsible for your elevation or your upbringing or your evolution and you are your best friend atmaiva ripuratmana means you are your worst enemy so that means we are our best friends our brain is our best friend or our brain is our worst enemy because we create habits and then habits create us in this journey of 9 months i studied a set of successful people here i found out that there is a pattern now moving away from a very heavy philosophical discussion at an operational level neeraj but how do i implement it when i studied people who are not addicted and those who are addicted i could see two very specific patterns people who are not addicted and they had a complete control over their life number one pattern was they were happy from within this is a wonderful pattern i could see they were very happy and i also saw people who were meaningfully busy meaningfully occupied and they did not have time for mobile when i asked them have you checked this uh, reel have you checked the status have you gone through this feed he said neeraj i don't have time for that my friend i have so many good things to do i have so many better things to do this was a common answer from these people either they were happy and they had a purpose in life or those people who were meaningfully busy either it's in business or they were in some research or whatever it is but they were not addicted but i went to people who were super addicted one very clear distinction i could see that they were unhappy they were frustrated or they did not have a meaningful goal it not necessarily that everyone was unhappy but most of the people who were who were addicted they didn't have a goal in life they were living because they are not dead yet i'm sorry but this is a very strong statement that i could see a pattern they didn't have a meaningful goal and corollary friends one who doesn't have a meaningful goal will always look for a distraction and that's not a life we should be living and that's not we should be uh, we are proud of so how do i translate this at an operational level but neither this is a philosophical thought very wonderful but how do i translate this pattern into my daily life that's exactly what we will discuss in this video how do you translate this very simple pattern i could observe and i experiment that with myself most of the people who are addicted 99% the first thing they do in the morning is to switch on their mobile start binging on social media we think it's normal neeraj it's a part of our life we check our whatsapp we check our feeds we check our likes and some reels and all of that no it is not a part of our life it's a pattern we call this over stimulation what actually happens over stimulation is when you get up in the morning your brain is fresh it's about to absorb a lot of things we set a meaningful schedule for the day the moment you start watching social media your reward pathways in our brain will instantly get over stimulated you will have avalanches of dopamine rush in your brain and any activity that is less than that doesn't sound wow so if i have to give an analogy you have to go to a, a part of the city where it's too crowded it's very hot in the afternoon it's like around 40 degrees or so first half of the journey you will be escorted in a super ultra luxury sedan beautiful music great air conditioning and after 30 40% of your journey you are asked to get down and the rest of the journey you are expected to travel through a two wheeler or auto rickshaw or a cycle rickshaw how does that journey sound the contrast you see here you just hate it and that's exactly if i have to give another analogy you are very very hungry you begin you are taken to a five star or a seven star hotel you love the spread you love the dishes you are about to uh, eat them 20% in the beginning you would have taken the starters you are about to start your main course but they say you know what that's not for you please have a vegetable sandwich no sauce given now you see the motivation level between these two 
ultra luxury on one side and zero luxury on the other side. That's exactly what our brain is doing to us and that's exactly what we go through. You are overstimulated, you have too much of reward chemical, the, 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 I want more chemical, you know, that's a dopamine. You are super excited, super thrilled and you're looking forward to for that entire stimulated feeling and all of a sudden you're expected to do a homework or a project work or doing dishes or washing clothes, cleaning house or washing your car or whatever the activity and that will be one hundredth of a pleasure of what you've been uh, given in the morning. That's exactly what people do. Can you believe it? They get up in the morning, they overstimulate themselves. Rest of the day is a hell for them. They keep on postponing because none of those activities produce the level of dopamine that your social media gives you in the morning. And what we know, what we say? I don't know. Nothing seems to be happening in life. I'm so unhappy. No wonder you will be unhappy because the activities that are meaningful will not give you the dopamine rush compare it to the meaningless pleasure that you experience in the morning. Now do you see a pattern here? So the first thing you must do is to stop watching mobile in the morning. Trust me, this is a disaster. If there is one thing that can change your complete life, stop overstimulating in the morning. Till 10 o'clock, no mobile. Get your acts together. Social media is reserved for the evening or late afternoon when you have achieved a great chunk of achievements during the day. Otherwise, trust me, it is suicidal. We don't need an enemy from outside. You know what I'm saying, right? That's exactly what you and I feel. You know, according to Dr. Edward Banfield of Harvard University, a person's success is directly proportional to the level of long-term vision he has, the long-term plan he has. And that's research proven theory friends. We all know that right study now struggle for a while so that you get a great grade and then you become successful in life. We all know that we have experienced it. We cannot compromise a long term happiness for a short time pleasure. And there is an experiment done. It's called marshmallows experiment where uh, kids of three, four years old were kept in a room and they were one by one. They were given a marshmallow. This is a beautiful experiment. I want you to look up in the Google and just let me just explain that to you. These kids were told that marshmallow is a beautiful candy kids like. So when they were given, they were told that you can have a marshmallow now. But if you wait for 15 minutes, you will get two marshmallows. So it all depends whether you want to have one now or you wait for 15 minutes, you will be given to. It's a very famous marshmallows experiment. And these kids, they were left alone in the room and they were being watched through a CCTV camera. And, and it was an actual experiment and kids who could not control their temptation and had it were studied and kids who were able to control their temptations and waited for 15 minutes and they were able to take two. These kids were studied for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. It was observed that kids who were able to wait and then uh, have ma two marshmallows were found to be far more successful compared to the kids who could not. Isn't that interesting? So our ability to sacrifice short term pleasure for a long term achievement is the single determining factor for you to be successful. You can actually look up to this experiment on YouTube called Marshmallows Experiment. Now that you understand that overstimulation in the morning is a recipe for a disaster, let's take a deeper dive into how does our brain trick us for sticking to the social media. The first trick or a trap that brain tells you, oh, you can always return to the work, just binge for a few minutes. Sounds familiar, right? So we start binging and it's in the next five minutes, I'll just do it. I'll check a couple of reels or watch some shots and then come back. Does it really happen? Talk to yourself. I know it's not easy. So because there are two reasons. One, the dopamine happiness is too high here. Project or the work you're supposed to do isn't that great. One reason. After that, you find it so hard to get back and every time we lie to ourselves. This probably is the biggest lie we tell ourselves. Unless there is a person screaming on us, there is an external pressure. We cannot get back because we have reels after reels after reels coming. You know what I'm saying, right? Whether it is studies, whether it is project work, anything that you do, which is less rewarding than compared to the reels. So the first trick, it's easier to return to the work, is a bait. Don't fall for it. 
trick number two of our favorite brain. You can always do it later. You have enough time. This is the biggest lie or the biggest trick brain plays with us. You know, in our brain, we have two faculties, two people sitting or living in our brain. One is a rational guy. This guy knows what to do, what decisions to make, when to get up, when to study, what to do, uh, how to come up in life, how to exercise, how to be healthy. This guy is a rational guy. But the problem is the brain is not run by this guy. Most of the times it is run by a second guy and that person's name is called instant gratification monkey. This monkey says, you know what, Mr. Rational, I understand we need to complete the project work. I know I understand we need to study. I need I, I understand these things. But let us just binge on one YouTube video on how this Bollywood celebrity uh, had their vacation or something else or one cookery show or something else. And before even we realize, we say, no, five minutes, I will get back. I have enough time in the afternoon. I have enough time tomorrow, but let me just do it. But does it stop there? No, we end up spending hours and hours and it just disappears. So this instant gratification monkey, monkey takes over our brain. You know, when does this guy stop? Only if there is one person, the third intervention, and we call this panic monster. This guy comes and screams on the instant gratification monkey. This deadline is coming. Do something. And this monkey runs away. A rational guy takes over. You know what I'm talking. So unless there is a push from outside, the monkey runs our brain. That's an instant gratification monkey. And you don't want to be a, a, a victim of this monkey. Because it will make us monkeys, right? The second trap you should never fall for is there is enough time. Because procrastination is a silent killer. You don't want to wake up after five years and look back and say, you know what? That's not what I'm proud of. That's not what I should have done. It's time to wake up now. The third trick our brain plays with us is FOMO. What is FOMO? Fear of missing out. What if I don't check my feed? What if I missed somebody's birthday? What if I missed somebody's... Uh, uh, ceremony or I, what if I miss some reels what I miss some event what I miss something so what if I miss something oh FOMO is a biggest challenge today people have oh my god I cannot miss I don't know what's happening in the world we believe that we are the general managers of the world and the whole will, world will come to an end if we don't look at the reels or the feeds or the mails or whatever it is no it can wait if you are a victim of FOMO, trust me, you will always have the jittery feeling. What am I missing? What am I missing? So you will always reach out to the mobile or whatever it is. So you don't want to be a, a, a victim of that. So FOMO is a big problem. Nothing will happen. Say 45 minutes. I will not watch. Or next three hours, I will not watch because I am in control. So this is the third trick our brain plays with us to ensure that we are stuck to social media. So what I want is, I want you to rate yourself from 0 to 10 on these three factors. It's like, I, it's easy to come back to work or I will always do it later or I'm suffering from FOMO. Where do you stand? You get an idea, right? So you will have one more metric to measure the trick that you've been a victim of. So the next video is all about combining the first and the second video, which is measuring the level of addiction and the tricks our brain plays with us with the third one which is a very deep dive on how do you actually overcome the addiction of social media and screen look forward to seeing you in the next video take care